A Channel 2 investigation that involves refineries and hurricanes, two things that Houstonians are very familiar with. And we're talking about one hurricane in particular tonight, Hurricane Laura. When she entered the Gulf more than three weeks ago now, it wasn't clear, at least immediately, where exactly she was going. Laura could have easily mm -hmm. been our storm, so all modes of protection should have been in place. But Channel 2 Investigates has learned that at least one key safety net was not. Investigator Joel Eisenbaum live tonight with what he's learned about a critical gap in air quality monitoring. Joel? Dominique, Chris, I don't know if you guys have ever noticed this. I want to show you something real quickly. Scattered throughout the metro area of Houston are these little trailers and right next to them banks of antennas. They're supposed to tell us what's in the air. Only during critical times, they're not. As Hurricane Laura barreled toward the Gulf Coast a few weeks ago, in and around Houston, plants and refineries scrambled to shut down. And once the coast was clear, restart. Part of that process includes more rigorous flaring, the burning off of excess chemicals. Quote, flaring is an approved way to safely relieve pressure during a unit shutdown, says a trade group. The unfortunate byproduct of flaring is more pollution. During Hurricane Laura, eight million pounds more, released in Harris, Brazoria, Jefferson, and Orange counties. Things like carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, and nitrogen oxide, pollutants, and irritants. Sister Rika Dimobot is a doctor who pins many of her patients' problems on the plants. We're talking about lives of people, and if the chemical industry puts profit ahead of the health of the people, that's really problematic. There's some opinion there, but here's fact. During that exact same Hurricane Laura shutdown period, nearly in lockstep, the state of Texas unplugged the air quality monitors in the storm's path. Much of the equipment, however, stayed on site. A key public protection layer was shut down during a period of high pollution. Our state's version of the EPA, TCEQ, says hurricanes help air quality. And if you depend on a plant or refinery to feed your family, that explanation may be just fine. I've lived right here on this street my whole life. Not a problem? Not a problem. When the state decides to turn off their air monitoring during this critical period, what are your thoughts about that? I think it's wrong. This isn't the first time TCEQ's stationary air monitors have been unavailable during an emergency. Remember the ITC fire last March? The chemicals that we're concerned about that could be in that plume that's floating over our heads. But sir, the Deer Park monitor hasn't reported since 5 a.m. Well, they're sometimes are down for maintenance. In both cases, with Laura and ITC, after hours of no government-controlled monitoring, temporary measures, mobile units were deployed to sniff the air. There's also government-mandated self-reporting by the plants and refineries. But that leaves the industry to at least partially police itself during a time when you would think there would be more oversight, not less. TCEQ tells me they have no immediate plans to upgrade their equipment so that it can have effectively function during severe weather. No plans to do that, but they tell me during a hurricane, air quality is typically better, not worse. We're live in Galena Park tonight. I'm Joel Eisenbaum, KPRC Channel 2 News. Thank you, Joel.